let me ask the ridiculous question, just in case. Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? We and don't, is it you? We don't know. It's probably not me because I was um, like 17 when Satoshi invented Bitcoin. 16. So unlikely. And also I'm not really a programmer. So um, there's a lot of theories, but honestly, it's one of the greatest mysteries of all time because even Bitcoiners that have been around since day one, really, you know, People that were around before Bitcoin came out, they were on the mailing list, they were active in the cypherpunk community. You ask them and they sincerely will not know, and they may not even have a good guess as to who Satoshi is. Is it important to know, or is it like actually important not to know? Do you think that's a feature or bug that you, we don't know? Some people don't like the uncertainty, especially you know, folks on Wall Street, they really want to know. And uh, if you read the Coinbase S1, they're, um, disclosure, pre-IPO, that's a risk factor that Satoshi could come back. So the the risk management crowd wants to know because they want to know if maybe Satoshi had, you know, undesirable political opinions or something that would forever taint the project. Do you think they were just trolling with that risk, with, uh, with Satoshi's identity <laughs> being a risk factor? Or is that like actual, like, was there an actual meeting and a discussion of that being a risk factor? I think in the risk factor sections of the prospectuses, it's really just the lawyers doing a total brain dump to cover absolutely everything oh, they sucks. can think of. So it's just lawyers, it's not like, uh, you know, it's like, uh, I think Elon was somewhere in the legal documents for SpaceX mentioned that like uh, Earth governments have no jurisdiction on Mars. Yeah. Like they threw that in there and it feels like, yeah, that could be lawyers, but it could also just be Elon trolling. Yeah. So I wonder if it's like the Coinbase <laughs> folks trolling or if, the, uh, I don't or if it's lawyers. I hope it's the trolling, not the lawyers. The the Coinbase leadership, they're not as big uh, trolls as Elon is. But uh, I mean, it's a, it's a risk for sure from their perspective because let's say Satoshi returned, doesn't seem likely. And let's say they decided to spend all their coins, which also seems very unlikely. Um, that's, you know, rumored to be or estimates have it at one to 1.2 million bitcoin which is like 50 60 billion dollars worth so some people consider that to be a risk you think it's uh you know this is almost like a topic of leadership it doesn't feel like anybody any one person speaks for bitcoin uh, th not there's not even like prominent figures like you have for like Ethereum, you have Vitalik Buterin. It doesn't, there's a lot of like top minds talking about it like yourself, but it's not like one or two. Do you think again, is that a feature or a bug? Like, uh, do you think for effective, for Bitcoin to effectively have a role in um, society that like is as large or larger than the dollar, there needs to be like a leadership that represents it almost like democratic kind of thing. Well, that's a real counterintuitive point because most Bitcoiners, including myself, would say, no, the lack of leadership is a great quality to have. Because if you have a charismatic leader and a foundation or corporation that controls it, maybe they can control the features of the protocol and maybe they can expropriate holders of the coin or you know, build in an endowment that pays them off and gives them privileged access to the units of the coin, for instance. So, you know, we, we call people that have privileged access to the money spigot Cantillon insiders, which is there's this economist that pointed out that as, you know, I think Richard Cantillon, that as money enters the economy, it has an uneven flow, right? And so you see this in the last, last decade or so, before that too, the consequence of money printing in this country is people that own financial assets made a lot of money and people that didn't, didn't. So you see that Cantillon insider, Cantillon outsider effect. And it's the same with the cryptocurrency in many other alternative cryptocurrencies that do have these corporate entities or these leaders and CEOs, they're able to make specific decisions regarding the protocol and the currency of the asset, the benefit themselves, their cronies, et cetera. And that's not a good feature to have. I mean, it does grant you, you know, the ability to orchestrate decisions in a faster and more efficient way. 
But long term, what you're trying to optimize for, if you're creating a money, is monetary credibility and soundness. So you don't really want it changing all that often. And you don't want to have the appearance of, um, you know, these elites that are engaging in rent seeking or anything like that. So there's definitely people that are influential in Bitcoin. There's core developers that people listen to because it's, I would say, a meritocracy largely. And there are sort of self-appointed high priests of the protocol. I write a lot about Bitcoin. People listen to me, but it's a completely free market of ideas, right? I don't have any authority within Bitcoin whatsoever. I'm just a scribbler, you know? You're just a scribbler. Just a scribbler. Well, so was Aristotle uh, and Socrates uh, and Nietzsche. Okay. 